Hello and welcome to this week's Table Talk. We've got lots to talk about, so let's get stuck in. Right, off we go then. Uh, first things first, as always, a massive welcome to any new subscribers to the chat uh, to the channel. Thank you very, very much for subscribing. Um, we hit the six thousand mark uh, a couple of weeks ago now, or, or just under. Um, so that's a, a massive milestone for me, and um, as a result, um, we've chosen the the next kit. This or the subscribers have chosen the next kit to be built, uh, and we'll talk about that uh, a little bit later. But right now, a massive thank you to all of you that subscribe to the channel. Um, it makes it what it is. Um, you guys get involved. You talk to me about various different things. Uh, you comment on the videos, you hit the like button, and now you can hit Super Thanks um, or Super Chat. So on a Friday um, in the live chat, you can you can uh, make a donation if you wish to. Um, and um, on any of my videos now, you can click the little heart button with a dollar sign in uh, and donate a pound or, or a dollar or whatever you want to do. Um, if you found that video enjoyable or helpful, then um, that's something you can do if you wish. You're not obliged to. I don't do Patreon and I don't do membership. I like to keep it free. And if you feel you want to donate, you can do. All the money that we generate from the channel goes back into the channel. So it goes into buying kits that we can then review on the channel uh, and then ultimately at some point build. And um, as we go, um, we're going to start asking you guys what kits you'd like to have uh, a first impressions video done of or reviewed. So that could be old kits, it could be upcoming kits. Uh, and then as we generate enough funds, we'll, we'll go out and get them. So right now, we're trying to generate funds to buy the Hella uh, 1 to 100 scale uh, Sol Royale, which I think will be very very interesting to review just been re-released um, a, a kit with quite a bit of history um, so yeah but talking of purchasing kits we had some new additions this week so let's start talking about those uh, you will have seen or maybe you didn't that we did a first impressions of this uh, pretty much as it came out I think um, uh, the first impressions came out the next day as, as I recall it's a small kit, it was a quick thing to do, and um, it, it wasn't planned because I wasn't sure that I was getting it when I got it. I'd ordered these two at the same time. This was still a pre-order, um, uh, but they came in the same box, so uh, it must have come out within a day or two. This is the most pre-ordered kit Airfix have ever, ever had. Um, in fact, they are all but sold out. So some of that, um, the sale of kits will be to people who are stocking them to sell, uh, you know, online shops or uh, bricks and mortar shops, whatever. So don't think your looks out. You just need to look around for them. But uh, And they are still on the Airfix website, but how many they've got left, I don't know. Um, there has been an issue of one or two people having a short shot. Um, I've got to say, I've not got that issue. Uh, my issue is that I've got um, a, a little bit of extra plastic on the parcel shelf where it shouldn't be, so I just need to be able to trim that back. It's not a biggie. So if you've got one of these and you've not checked the kit, go and check inside. Make sure that the back panel has got the parcel shelf moulded in properly. If not, you need to contact Airfix's customer service or the retailer you purchased it from. So, yeah. Actually, a cracking little kit, uh, given its age, I think um, 75 was when it was last released or something. They, they lost part of the mould or all of the mould, I'm not quite sure. Um, but they weren't able to find the clear parts, so the clear parts have been re-engineered um, uh, using current technology and you get some nice textured detail there on the, on the plastic um, side windows. So, really nice kit. If you didn't see the first impressions, uh, you can go and find that in the first impressions playlist 
we've got tons and tons of videos in there. Um, so, some, uh, well over 150 first impressions videos in there now. Okay, so we bought that. And at the same time, we bought this, the 1930s Bentley. Now, I've been umming and ahhing about the Bentley for a well, while, since the 1990s, <laughs> to be honest. Um, what appeals to me is the subject matter. It's really cool. Um, and the size of it, it's 112 scale. So, you know, the, the, the wheels are that sort of big. It's, it's, it's a whopping big model. Um, the reason why I've never bought it before is because... In the 1990s, Airfix was getting bad press. I'd moved on to sort of Tamiya kits uh, and building those. Uh, and 135 armor was sort of my thing, and that's what I did, and, and nothing much else. Um, uh, and it was always one of those, oh, yeah, I'd like that, but I'm getting this this time. Um, so for ages, uh, I, I've been thinking about it. Anyway, I decided to take the plunge. Um, and we got it and I, I used, I had my um, Airfix discount, membership discount and you also get points now if you purchase directly from the uh, website. So you get points, each point is worth a pound. So I had some points to use up as well. So throwing it all in, you know, I, I, I got I got this for about 100 quid. So a, a, a fair bit off. I think it's 111, 112 pounds. Don't quote me on that, but it's something like that on the website. So I got those two at the same time. Now, I have already this week filmed the first impressions of this video and I was pleasantly surprised. Um, obviously, it's a 1971 kit, so it's only 12 months younger than I am um, and it's stood up the test of time better than I have, in fairness. Um, but it is a bit what you expect when it when it comes to flash and stuff. But first impressions is videoed and you'll see that in a, a few weeks time when we get an opportunity to, to bump it into the schedule. Um, so yeah, that was nice. Um, I also got, you remember, we uh, last week we talked about resin parts for the SD KFZ222, uh, the Tamiya kit that we'd looked at before. Well, I filmed the first impressions for the Tamiya kit. I haven't done the review of the resin yet, but I got the photo etch for it from Edward. And this is still available on their website. And you get three frets of etch. You get dials and you get acetate. You get a lot in there for your money because it, it, you know, it was relatively cheap. It was, I think it was under under ten pounds. So uh, and there's there's tons on it. So that's uh, going to be in the filming schedule for next week to review that. So uh, we'll probably do the resin and the photo etch as a, a single video looking at um, the aftermarket for it. But that was a nice little ad. It's not the only photo etch I got. I got photo etch in here as well. And before we talk about that, we need to talk about what it goes on which is this. Now this is just the box cover because I didn't want the whole box on here. So of all the Airfix kits, for me, this is the most classic and probably the most consistently produced kit they've ever had, I would imagine, um, because this has pretty much been constantly on offer since it first came out. Um, now I, I built one of these as a kid and I loved it, um, and I, I'm, my dad was massively impressed with my painting skills on the uh, uh, on the stern gallery there. But I only did the plastic parts, I didn't put the sails on, and I didn't rig it, um, I don't think I put flags on, but what I had done looked really cool. Now there's a few mistakes in this kit, which aren't Airfix's fault. There were mistakes being made by the people preserving HMS Victory at the time, so in the, in the 20s, 30s, 40s, um, they didn't have her preserved correctly and you can see her in the artwork here at the Battle of Trafalgar with these booms on for the ship's boats. Well they weren't added until way after Battle of Trafalgar because they would have their um, boats actually in tow as they went into battle so the ship's boats would be out there so anyone falling over can get, get picked up fairly quickly. That was the plan so um, the, the artwork, beautiful as it is, doesn't really depict what would have been going on. Um, and there's other subtle changes, and we'll talk about those in the first impressions video, uh, I'm sure. Um, so I have 
uh, I've got this to video as well next week. Now, um, I, I tried to revisit this um, two or three years ago now, um, and I bought one. It was a white box version, um, so it'd come out around about 2000-ish, um, uh, and I, I bought it, and it was shocking um, because the tooling was so worn that the, the amount of sink and uh, disc formation of the masts and spars made it almost impossible. Uh, there was so much flash, the flash and the parts were merging together and it, you were almost scratch building everything and it was just a nightmare and I ended up binning it and I got fed up of it. So anyway, um, I've now revisited the idea of revisiting this build and uh, I want to do it justice and I've managed to pick this up for a real bargain from a charity shop for £9.99. So you won't get one of these for under somewhere between £25 and £50 on, on eBay. Uh, one of these 70s versions um, with the blue label on. Um, and actually, inside here, the part is as, the parts are as crisp as anything. There is virtually no sink. Everything is really nicely moulded. The spars, the details, you can see all the, all the um, 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 bolt detail on some of the wood and stuff. It's just really, really nice and crisp. Even the, the sails are nice and uh, nice and not deteriorated. Um, and it ha has its flags. So complete kit. Um, the actual bag uh, was unopened. So uh, it's been not touched since the 70s. Um, and the instructions are even still white. So uh, just a beautiful find for, for that money. Um, so I'm up for revisiting this. And that got me all excited. So um, because I've, I've been on HMS Victory several times, my grandfather used to train uh, new cadets on her. They have them going up the rigging and stuff because she's still a working ship. Um, so uh, I've, I've got a little place in my heart for HMS Victory and in here we have some upgrade for it uh, so you can get photo etch and some 3d printed parts for the 1 to 180 victory uh, and that's what we've got in there so we'll be filming a review of those as well and having a look at those and they certainly enhance so they add some stuff that's not included in the kit um, there's three different lots of photo etch you can get and i've got two of them um, but because uh, the other one's out of stock but in fairness I'm not sure I want to add it um, but we can talk all about that when we review the photo etch so that's what I got new this week so let's just check you didn't miss anything important in the week that's just gone uh, Monday we put out another ICM paint review video this time we were looking at the varnish uh, and to be honest I really like the varnish, it performs really well, um, just thinning it with water, really great, uh, brushes on great, um, doesn't pool, very, very nice, but pots are too small. Um, anyway, it was a short video, I, I felt like that needed to be reviewed as well, so we re reviewed all three of them. Um, didn't get many people looking at it. I guess people are more interested in, in the paints than, than the uh, varnish. And then on... Wednesday, um, our first impressions was the Minerva uh, CSM Copper State Models kit in 1 to 35 scale. What a stunning, stunning kit that is. Really, really nicely engineered, lovely detail. Uh, part count's not too high. It's, it's been well done, well thought through. It's a great uh, replica when built up. So really, really nice. I was impressed with it. Um, I fast becoming my favorite model manufacturer CSM but as with all model companies you're limited to what they release so you can't just say well I'm only going to buy and build their models because you'd soon run out of things to build so um, yeah now we do have the uh, 148 aircraft to do I've still not filmed the first impressions for that but that'll be coming up soon as well um, and I've got some figures from Copper State Models to review. So then we've looked at um, something from their, all their ranges uh, and got a, a good overall view of, of CSM that way. Uh, and, and someone actually said, well, I've only really looked at the aircraft, so it was nice to see their 
armoured vehicles and, and that's why we do do this just to get people to spot things they, they might not have seen before um, so yeah if you didn't see that video um, even if you're not massively into armoured cars but you do occasionally build a vehicle go and have a look at it because that might be the vehicle you want to build it was really really lovely then yesterday we had the next instalment number 26 would you believe of the queen mary 2 um, i feel like i'm back in my stride with the queen mary 2 we're chugging along with that we'll talk a little bit more about that in a minute um, but yeah uh, i'm pleased with how she's progressing um, the, the the models chucking up one or two challenges here and there but we're getting through them um, and um, last weekend was my queen mary 2 weekend and we did a little bit on on the uh, uh hms fly and we did some on the queen mary 2 so let's talk about the progress of the builds and what's coming up in the way of of building um in the near future so let's start with the queen mary 2 uh last weekend we got the funnel completed and on uh, and then uh, once I glued it all in place, I realized that I hadn't painted it correctly. Um, um, what I've done is I've left two panels, two front panels um, white that should be in the funnel red. So I, I need to go and turn those red at some point. Um, but um, other than that, we put some photo etch on, uh, including the um, uh, sports courts. Um, we put the fast lifeboat on and we did some lifeboat painting, which I can show you the progress of. There we go, so the two, two different lifeboats. There we go, so you'll notice that the side curtains are a different orange, that's correct, they tend to fade with the sun. And then this one is the more complicated uh, lifeboat that, what, that they ferry people around in those ones. So um, there's, a, there's a few of both types to go on each side. So uh, yeah, so that's where we got to. Um, I want to really push along because I want to get to Sharnhorst. Um, I don't want to don't rush the Queen Mary to, but I do want to get it done. Um, so I'm going to be focusing quite heavily on, on the Queen Mary 2 at the moment, um, which is helping break up the GOTA um, rigging. So. Um, we didn't do anything on the go to last weekend, it, go to weekend this weekend, uh, and I plan to finish putting all the eyes in and get the two wings together, which means uh, finishing painting the um, uh, wing struts, um, and then the uh, rigging has to be all um, inked in, and then we're ready to, to close it together, and then we can start rigging the two wings um before we put the the um framework on for the floats then we flip it back over and put the fuselage on um so when it's the weekend for the gota i will also be doing some queen mary too because i need to break up um the rigging because it gets a little bit monotonous and you sort of go and then you lose interest so uh it'll be sort of do one wing of dead eyes then do some queen mary 2 and uh, and do it that way so we'll, we will be doing some queen mary 2 most weekends um well, most weekends that i'm doing some modeling um i should say so we'll be moving that forward anyway um and uh, s every saturday morning i'm doing some of the second planking of the hull on hms fly and there's nothing really to show you it's the same same as you've seen on the on the first planking so once that's done and probably i've painted in the white of the lower hull um, and we're ready to start moving on to um, other decorative uh, woodwork on there that's when you'll see fly come back i can't tell you when that's going to be because i don't know how long it's going to take me to finish the hull but second half of august i've got two weeks off work and a plus a long weekend um, so I'd like to think I'll get some extra time on fly during then. My, my plan is by the end of August, it's optimistic, but it's the plan to get this, the whole of the fly finished so we can start producing videos from September onwards and get the Queen Mary 2 finished. 
even if we have to sacrifice the speed of go to videos. Um, but I, I still intend to do one weekend on Queen Mary 2, one weekend on Gota, but when I've got extra time, it'll be on Queen Mary 2 uh, and push her along. Um, so, yeah, and there's not that much more to do with the Gota. And as you know, my pipeline is Gota, Bowfighter, and then the uh, subscriber selected matchbox uh, shall be Diorama. Um, so that's that's where we're going with, with all of that. And then after the uh, shall be, we probably, although I can't 100% guarantee it because everybody else has has to be uh, ready as well, we probably have the Bofus, uh, the Morris Bofus buddy build coming up at that point. Um, so that that's sort of the plan. And then what I want to do after that, um, because we should have the Sharn horse up and running, and that's the biggest project we'll have done on the channel at least, um, I, I want to be uh, ripping through some small kits and getting some uh, 172 aircraft and maybe little kits like this done um, and, and chuck out some some smaller volume to break up the huge bits of uh, work that we've got to do. And, and of course the Sharnoff will kick off with hull, hull alterations, modifications and uh, it's the bit I enjoy the least of a ship build is sorting the hull out. Um, it feels like it takes forever and then you get to the exciting bit of building all the details. So um, yeah, that's where we are with, with the builds. Um, I will keep updating you every week because there's, I still get people asking a question when's flying coming back and, and my stock answer is watch the table talk videos. This tells you everything that's happening on the channel. Um, so you know uh, what's been, you don't miss anything, and you also know what's coming up. So let's um, talk about what's coming up. So on Monday, we'll be looking at the ICM metallic paint range. Um, that's worth watching because I struggle with some metallics, particularly um, gold and brass. I find them very difficult to find good paints for those. Um, and we might have cracked it. So have a look at that on Monday. Uh, I think it's interesting um, and they come out really, really nice, those colours. Uh, and then on uh, Wednesday, we've got a Tacom kit in 1 to 35 scale, which is their um, special edition release of the Ukrainian um, Gepard, uh, which is a re-release of their earlier Gepard released kit. Um, and we'll take you through that and have a look at that. So if, like me, you've not seen the kit before uh, and you don't know what's in there, uh, we'll sort all that out for you on Wednesday. Uh, then Friday, I don't know. Um, I don't even know if I'm going to have a build diary out or not. Um, I am still around on, fr on Friday, but I go away on the Saturday. Um, so I'll be doing very little to no modelling next weekend. Uh, the weekend after that, I go away on holiday again. And the weekend after that is my birthday weekend, so I'm not sure what's going on. So between uh, after this weekend until the end of August, um, model building is an unknown for me because uh, it's usually the weekends when I do it. Um, but like I say, I do have two weeks off, so I am expecting to get some done um, most mornings in that fortnight, to be honest. So we should rocket it forward. But I'm not around on the Fridays, so um, I might not put a, a build out and we might leave it till September. Um, we'll still put out the other videos that come out in the week, I think. Um, I'm going to try and get ahead. Before I go away on holiday, I always try and get ahead with my videos so that there's more queued up, ready to just, just release. Um, but we'll see how it goes. I'm not going to put myself under pressure. I've been there before. It's a mistake. We'd, we don't want YouTube burnout. We absolutely don't. Um, so, uh, but we'll most likely manage to get the Monday and Wednesday slots out as normal. Um, I, I don't want to um, rush um, putting stuff out. And with Queen Mary 2, um, you, you need a lot of material to fill the hour with her. Um, and with Gota, we're at a stage where we're just doing a lot of repetitive work and there's nothing really to... To share that you've not already um, uh, seen. There is some material there so that's going to go out every time there's a bit of material to go. So next Friday could be the next goater 
But if I don't think there's enough material, um, it could be that we kick off um, the, uh, a shelf queen build. So I have a one to 200 Macassa that's about half built. Uh, and I might start putting those vi uh, videos out just to space things out. Or I might do nothing and go, right, I'll wait until I've got enough Queen Mary 2 material for a couple of videos and the same with the Gota and then relaunch in September when I'm ahead of myself. So I don't know how it's going to pan out. Um, on uh, next Friday, if I can't do... Um, if I can't do a build, I might do a live stream uh, and fill that gap with a live stream instead and just say hello and have a chat and uh, build something while people are watching, um, possibly do that. So, uh, as always, lots going on, but August is always a funny month with the, with the kids being off, off school. My partner works at a school, so they're all off at the same time. It gets a lot noisier as well. Um, but yeah, it's... Um, uh, it is what it is, um, uh, but we're not going anywhere. So if you see a drop in videos, don't worry about it. It will be back in September. Not much happening in the garden, but here it is. Right, I have some special thanks to say. So. If you are one of the lovely people that contributed to the channel um, this week, then this is the spot where I say thank you. Right then. So these peoples are the uh, model kit stuff stars of the week. So a massive, massive thank you to uh, UK Dave. Thank you for your contribution. Massively appreciated. Jeff7218. Um, Lovely that you gave me some money. I, I am really uh, grateful for that. Um, and I love the contributions that you do to my videos. So a big thank you to me. Um, you, you help shape the channel, which is brilliant. Um, Steve Stuff 1450 uh, a very gracious thank you to you because that was a lovely contribution you made. Thank you very much, sir. Greatly appreciated. I will tell you how much we've... Um, We've pulled together in a minute towards the uh, the, the plan of getting the, the Hella kit. Um, Steve Williams, 1769. Again, a massive thank you. Very generous gift. Um, it is greatly appreciated. Um, and last but by no means least, Flea Kennel, which is an interesting handle. Um, I'm guessing he has dogs. Um, uh, also contributed to the channel this week. Now, all of those contributions plus the contributions that were made um, last week gets us about 45% of the way towards that Hella kit. Now in the future, um, once a month, I will get um, my advert revenue. And when that comes in, we will also put it to the Hella kit, um, which will get us a fair bit closer um, because um, I've generated so far roughly what I would generate in a month of advertising uh, from Super Thanks. So if you support the channel, not just this video, but on any of my videos, if you say uh, thank you by uh, chucking me a, a pound or something like that, you know it's going to go towards that Hella kit um, and I will read your name out and say thank you to you in person on Table Talk as I just did. And we will do that. Um, every week. Um, so a massive thank you to everyone who contributes. Even if you can't afford to contribute and you leave a comment and you hit a thumbs up, that helps the algorithm. That means more people watch. That means we get more revenue. So uh, however you're doing your bit, um, then, then thank you very much. But if you can afford it and you enjoyed the video and I entertained you for half an hour or an hour and you thought, well, that's worth a pound of anyone's money, then you know where to put it and you know where it's going to go. Uh, money doesn't go into my pocket, it goes into the channel so I can share things with you. And in the future, we won't just buy kits with it. We might buy stuff to improve uh, camera uh, filming and that sort of stuff. Um, so there's lots of things that we could put that to. And like I said, increasingly, I want to get you guys, the contributors, to... Tell me what you think. Where should it go? Should it go on? Do we need to improve the camera? Do we need to uh, uh, get a kit that I've never reviewed and it's a real must? I don't know. Um, I will be formally asking the questions um, about that when we get the Hella on order. Then I'll be coming to you and saying, 
Right guys, what's next? In the meantime, any contributions are massively appreciated. Um, we have generated around about a hundred pounds. I when I say around about, uh, I'm not uh, fully sure because um, some of it is coming in Canadian dollars and in euros uh, um, and American dollars and so on. And then it depends on the exchange rate that's being applied by um, uh, Google. Um, so um, don't know for sure yet. Um, so until it will land in my monthly payment with my revenue, but I can see it um, and I see them as it comes as a comment, it's highlighted to me so I know um, and, and then I document it down so we can do this thanks. So that's where we are with that. Um, everything's ticking over uh, really nicely. I'm looking forward to some uh, getting a break and some holidays which are you know, coming up and it all starts this weekend when we're going to the zoo after hours. I think I mentioned it last week. So uh, we're all quite excited about that. And then Sunday it's buying stuff that my daughter needs for going to high school. So um, spending money, not so good. Anyway, there you go. I can't think of anything else. I think that covers it for this week. Um, Next week's table talk should be safe. I'm not sure whether we're going to get a table talk then for the rest of August. Um, I don't know. So uh, watch this space next week and we'll tell you, we'll talk about um, what's going to happen throughout the, the rest of August. Okay, lovely to see you. Thanks for dropping in. Thank you for all the kind words uh, and for the super thanks. It's massively appreciated. Uh, and I'm looking forward to being able to share that kit with you once we've got it. Take care, everyone. You enjoy your modelling, and I'll see you very soon.